and I quote, I was going down on my girl and she started getting a little wild and was really enjoying herself. Out of nowhere, she rips a giant fart. At the same time, I was gasping for air and got a mouthful of breath and small bits of fecal matter in my face and stuck between my teeth. This is such a uh, crappy situation. I mean, you know this man's I mean? really down in the dumps, right? You know, this is probably, <laughs> I mean, this might not be the number one worst scenario, but it's definitely it's the number, number two. two. <laughs> I mean, I would love to see the yearly fatalities from eating butt. You know what I mean? Like, there's got to there's, there's gotta be a few a year from eating butt. You know, no. eating butt's dangerous. Shout out Pat Beverly, who's now my new favorite sixer. And then Rome asked him, he's like, yeah, what does he do to like rectify that? He's like, nothing, it's over. Everyone knows you're soft. Everyone knows you ain't gonna do shit. Everyone knows <laughs> you're a uh, sissy. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, the 4th Street Productions LLC proudly brings to you the internet's greatest news team in the world, the Iron Fist Matt Lavelle, the Punisher Steve Cabin, the Working Perspectives Podcast, and I'm Liam Reese. And if you ain't down with that, we got two words for you. Working Perspectives. Oops. He got aggressive. But now that we're here, we're going to do the pop in. We're going to do awesome news stories that are better than all the news that you're ever going to find on the internet. Yeah. You can find the rest of our content on Working Perspectives Podcast. You can find us on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, uh, Instagram, all those good places. Yep. So, uh, Steve, how are we doing tonight, brother? I was in the Poconos earlier this weekend. I got a machete. If we can see. Yeah, I got a machete with a knuckle guard. And hold on. Damn. From the Meth Mart. This is the gas station, by the way. And the Meth Mart. Nunchuck. Real joints. Cause metal and wood joints. Real joints. Like Michelangelo. So. You got that at the gas station? It's the Meth Mart. Call it the right thing, all right? Because they sell lunch meat, they sell energy drinks, they sell beer, they sell crack pipes, they sell machetes, they sell nunchucks, whatever you need, the Meth Mart has. Shout out the Meth Mart and the meth Same head show. that runs it. Dude, that's Hell what, like, yeah. that's what, like, trashy middle of the nowhere, middle of nowhere, like, small white towns are, like, the Hell best yeah. for. Like, Hell big, yeah. cheap knives and shit, yep. like, swords and shit. Right. Yeah, nunchucks. Yep. Anything Where can you, you find like, real nunchucks? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. All right, man. How we doing tonight, brother? Doing good, my man. Super excited for this. Man, can't wait. Love your intro. Great job, bro. Doing it. We're doing what we can, you know? All right. Well, this is the Working Perspectives Podcast. Let's get this thing started. Let's go. It's our objective to be effective by voice in society. Working perspectives We're just sharing Working perspectives All right, on the show today, we're going to be bringing you topics from around the globe. The topic's going to fall under three different categories the categories are stupid is as stupid does incredibly <sighs> incredible and Woo! sports and speds yeah! we're gonna get right into it with the first topic which is stupid is a stupid does liam leshmushma reese what do we got for stupid is a stupid does bay bay a mansfield connecticut man was so bombed when he left his house that he forgot that he left his kid like at home. Oh no. The, the problem is he drives to the store and he goes into the store, shops and everything, comes out, and this guy is like so out of it that when he comes out and goes to his car, he's thinking, like, oh my gosh, my kid's not here. My kid's not in the car. So he calls 911. <laughs> State troopers show up. They're looking for this missing child. The dude's name was Colby Parker. And he, him, the state troopers and everything, they're looking everywhere for this kid, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? 
they they like you know what i mean it's like a big deal missing big child time. dude so like as they're looking for this kid you know the next stage of it is like you go to your house regroup like find out where the kid was going so they get to the house and the kid is just chilling there you know what i mean so so the guy that is that bomb he completely forgot that he even brought the kid so it was the second time he went to that store. So I think this is where the mix-up was. Earlier oh, no. that day, earlier that day, he showed up, shopped. He was on camera with the kid and everything. The second time he showed up, he wasn't with the kid. So I think that's where like his brain like got like scrammed. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm I'm gonna say that it might have been drugs between the first, more drugs mm -hmm. from the first, the second mm -hmm. stop that kind of mm -hmm. washed away some of the memory. And it was the same store twice. So how forgetful <laughs> is this dude? You know what I mean? Bro. He forgets the kid, then he's got to go back to the store because he forgot whatever he didn't get on the first run. You know what I mean? <laughs> Unless I mean it was a place called the Price Chopper. I don't know what in, in Connecticut mm, if that's like yeah. a beer. Like if that's a beer joint, like if it's like how we have, uh, you know, like in supermarkets, we can get yeah. beers. I don't know if that's how the price chopper is. So I don't know if it was a beer run or if he just forgot something. My, my money's on both. You know what I mean? He forgot more beer. Chopper. I'm going to be what honest. Up? I don't think he's doing well in life. Is he, if he's rushing Enough. out to the price chopper a couple times a day, <laughs> probably not the best spot. Yeah. So I would not, I would assume you can get nunchucks there. Dude, this yeah. guy, like they had to send out an Amber alert and everything. Oh, like, oh, oh, this is oh my God. Bro, also and the kid too, is just sitting at home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also, bro, like legit, that is the your your biggest fear of your life. You know mm. what I mean? Like kids go. Oh, yo, total nightmare. Real come to life. Like man, right? I feel. I mean, the having to go through the thought of having a missing kid is punishment enough for like you know making the mistake of thinking you had a missing kid. You know. Also, I would love yeah. to see like how he acted when he realized his kid was at his house. That you're you right. Know? That would have been gold. <laughs> well, well, not surprisingly, Colby is being charged with multiple offenses related to endangering a minor and like, DUI and everything. Yeah. You know? What a dip. Yeah. What a Jesus. dip. Is right. What are you gonna do, man? Well, All I right. guarantee, I guarantee that cop was like, "We got another one at Price Cutter again." Here we go. Yeah, at Price Chopper. At <laughs> price the, uh, Chopper. <laughs> the Price Chopper again. Yeah. yeah, I bet he called and he's like, "Oh, we got another Price Chopper situation." They're like, "All right, does he have a samurai sword at least?" And I'm like, "Oh yeah. no, okay, thank God. At least not They're this like, time." Don't worry, Mike's already in the parking lot. He's he's there. Yeah. yeah. Nice. All right. Good stuff, Lashmoosh. Love it. Shout out to that guy. Steve, we're going to you. What do you got for stupid is a stupid do? Cody Miller, 26, of Palmdale, California, landed in the ER from having what he is claiming an allergic reaction. His face swelled up. His throat was swelling up. He didn't know why. Runs to the ER. They get to the ER. They're not sure what's going on. They have to bring in a specialist. The specialist is in allergies and infectious diseases. He doesn't know what's going on. Poor old Cody can't talk to them because his throat's so swollen. He's almost not breathing, right? But good old technology, what can Cody do? He can text on a phone. So Cody texts to the, to the doctor, the infectious specialist, and I quote, I was going down on my girl, and she started getting a little wild and was really enjoying herself. Out of nowhere, she rips a giant fart. At the mm. same time, I was gasping for air and got a mouthful of ass breath and small bits of fecal matter in my face and stuck between my teeth. Instantly, they ran tests on the fecal matter, which then, of course, showed that in the doo-doo, it was intermeshed with, with peanuts. So he then says, oh and gosh. I quote again, I never knew I had an issue with peanuts. I love Snickers. Doctors say the fact that the bits of peanuts were in shit apparently lowered my immune system and was lowered it enough to create this near fatal incident. Shout out, Cody, not his girlfriend. Oh, and then hold on before I end this. He also at the end said, sucks I can't eat peanuts now, but it sucks even worse. I can't look into my girl's eyes without cracking up. Cody yeah. got a good Cody got a good humor to this. I mean, he really had no choice. This is such a uh, crappy situation. I mean, you know this man's I mean? really down in the dumps, right? You know, this is probably, <laughs> I mean, this might not be the number one worst scenario, but it's definitely it's the number, number two. two. <laughs> Why was he breathing dog? in? Because Bro. he was getting so deep. With he was probably up, gyrating and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Yo, I, I would the... love to see what his girl looks like. It'd be like, if she's a big old linebacker, that's one thing. But if she's like a smoking rocket and she's well, just like 
blowing like dropping heat in this guy's mouth while he's trying to go down on her like well i mean he's cool with it so there's a pretty good chance she is you know i mean mean? you know (laughs) honestly too i mean the youth today they're all they're all eating ass man yeah all these everybody's eating ass you know? Now, also, if you Google good old Cody Miller, 26 of Palmdale, California, and you see the picture, dog, his, it looked like, what was the movie with, um, with, um, uh, Ace Ventura guy, where his, like, face swells, his lips and his face are so enormous. Out of the mask? Like the mask. Is that where it happens, where he, like, gets the, what movie was it where they got the reaction to their face? I forget. He's spending uh, that. But oh, this dude's face, the lips and the face is so funny, and he couldn't even speak. And he texted the doctor. And of course, like I said, this is quote, by the way. She ripped a huge fart oh, in boy. my mouth as I. Yeah, oh. That's wild. Yo. That is wild, dude. That's how he found oh. out he was allergic to peanuts. Before that, he said he was eating Snickers and whatnot. But apparently because it was in the doo-doo, it lowered an immune system. And it blew it, I guess, with the excessive force down his throat. That That's is how, so like, crazy, dude. That is, that is insane. That, that is her, insane story. I'm suing her. I'm suing this broad. I mean, thank God he didn't die. You know, she tried to kill me. Imagine? I'm suing her. I mean, I would love to see the yearly fatalities from eating butt. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, there's got <laughs> to be a few a year from eating butt. You know, no. eating butt's dangerous. You imagine that's one of your friends. We're all standing around the funeral, and you're Bro. like, "Here, how Steve went." Bro. Yeah, I heard you fart it in his mouth, and he couldn't take it. You're like, so Damn. <laughs> <Dude>. Honestly, <laughs> yo. I mean, Ew. how how wild is this bitch that she just rips ass in his mouth? She has to be like, so hot. That's the all, only way you can. Ex- you can that's what it. I. Say. That's what I. I agree. That's I don't know. I knew. Well, I'll I'll say this. I knew this guy. Right. Um. He's a friend of mine. He's one like one of my best friends. And he was in college. And there was this girl. Like you know, they like you know, he had a group of friends. And there was a group of girls that hung out with a group of friends. Whatever. And there's this one girl that would like blow all the guys. Right. And he was, he got drunk. Soldier, shout out her. Yeah, oh yeah, she's a total lead. But she got drunk one night, and like, they all did. He went, got a whole Larry's cheesesteak, ate the whole Larry's cheesesteak, right? And then she's doming him, and he busts ass while she's doming him. And she doesn't say a word, right? But uh, like, in my mind, I'm like, it's just a complete lack of respect. So if, if this is really his girlfriend, or she's like, you know... Just getting, you know, some some stuff from this guy and and kicking him to the curb Doesn't kind care. of thing. Yeah. Right. I think it could be like that. But I don't know. Now listen, mm-hmm. I'll be I'm gonna be fully transparent here. If Penelope Cruz wants to fart in my mouth, I'm gonna take it and not say a word. I right. will right. absolutely take right. it and not if say Olivia a word. If Olivia Wilde wants to just give me a brown <laughs> helmet, I'm all about it. You know what I, I mean? Won't. I'm not telling my friends or anyone on the planet, but I'm just gonna eat it. That moment dies right there in my brain. CTE is then a weapon, and I can just forget the moment. Yeah, you just yeah. take it to the grave and you know, yep. what I mean? just let it on be my one deathbed. Of, one of those things, one of those things that's only for you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh my- on my deathbed, I call my brother over. I'm like, Tony, come here. <laughs> yeah. That whore Janelle shit in my mouth. Kill her. <laughs> He's like, what the hell? <laughs> oh, wow. it's not right. It's not right. Yeah. No. Um. Yeah. This guy also, he was definitely, uh, yeah, he's definitely eating a guy's butt. That's the. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, like, boy. let's be honest. So, all right. Real nice. Real good stuff. Awesome. Real nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's uh let's keep it on uh, moving on down the road. Uh Lishmoosh, I'm going back to you for incredibly incredible. Good sir. What do you have for incredibly incredible? Guys, we've covered a story like this before. And when you're in a situation like this, there's you know, you you can't you just can't forget the first rule. Okay. So two daycare workers at Kids Unlimited in Prosperity, South Carolina were busted for running a child fight club. Oh. Serena Caldwell and Erica Jones were accused of instigating at least 14 kids, some as young as three years old, to throw hands. Local sheriffs arrested both teachers for contributing to minors' delinquency and unlawful conduct towards a child. So the pair was busted after a toddler broke the first rule of toddler fight club and told his parents that he was asked to punch each other like as punishment. So the fights were also a lot of the fights were also caught on video too. That's why they hammered these girls so hard. So they have proof. Like the Caldwell chick is facing 15 counts and the Jones chick is ch- is facing 14 counts of getting 3 and 4 years old, dude, to fight. Dude, I'm not going to lie. 
If someone did that to my daughter, I don't care if it's a woman, I'm going to beat the fucking shit out of her. Like, I oh. would kill a bitch if she fucking tried to do that to my kid. That is unreal. The crazy thing is, too, is, like, my daughter's already in Brazilian jiu-jitsu, but it's a different thing, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it's not like kid cockfighting. Like, this is yeah. brutal, dude. Like, that's, like, legit. They're, yeah, they're, like, these kids are all going to be affected for the rest of their lives. To be fair, though, the youth is a little soft, so. <laughs> I was actually, like, thinking of that like you know not, what i mean like you know, well maybe you know a little bit if they maybe, would if they would have waited them to wrestle not like not, yeah. as long as you're not squaring them off or, and like the weight there has to be weight classes too like you can't have like yeah. the six-year-olds and the three-year-olds yeah. like the six-year-olds can't be picking on the three-year-olds oh yeah. you have two three-year-olds they're about the same size you, you know, know I mean? dude when i was a kid my dad <laughs> he was our cub scout leader and we were living in california so i was six or seven years old right and mm -hmm. he would get like when it was Tom's Cub Scout group, right? But I always like was there because I was so close to their age. I just like hung out there, you know. And he legit like they would all come over. There's probably like eight kids in this Cub Scout group, and my dad would have his box in the front yard, right? And the oldest kid was probably eight, and I was the youngest kid at six or seven. And we would all box each other in the front yard of our house in California. And I was thinking about, it, I was like, you know, I don't know. Boys is different though. You know what I mean? 100%. And it was like, one, we had six, like, we were little kids with 16 ounce boxing gloves. Like, there, we could barely throw these things. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, it looked like we were, you know, like they were like massive on us. So, like, no one ever got hurt. And it was more just for like, you have to like, you know, instill some aggression in kids. But still, yeah, man. I now, listen, know. I got two things on this, uh, Liam. I saw this story too myself because, of course, we usually think alike. Uh, two things. Uh, the parents all suck that sent their kids here because first off, when you see the picture of the two people, I know. Who, yeah. I was going to say, mm -mm, that. <laughs> I'm never, I'm never dropping my daughter off with the people that run this place. Right. These two people that were arrested, they both look like they just got off the block. Especially just the lady the on pipe. the right. The Dog, lady on the right terrible. looks like she was in prison yesterday. Yeah. Just got out <laughs> this morning. I yeah. agree. Also, did you see the facility scream? It was like a pole barn. Wherever mm. they were putting these kids in, it looked like something I'd buy beer out of in goddamn Maniac. <laughs> it was not a daycare. It was literally like an aluminum roof pole barn that you probably keep a John Deere tractor and four wheelers in. I, it was the whole situation when I saw it. I was like, yo, these pictures yeah. are insane. Yeah, what yeah. asshole showed up and was like, nah, this looks like a great daycare. Yeah, yeah, you two too? Yeah, hell yeah, take my kid. Like, I, I blame the parents because you knew what you were getting. I guarantee this was like a $5 daycare. They yeah, were probably like yeah. some real cheap. And they're like, oh, I got a great one. You're like, oh, did you? Because your kids are in there kicking the shit out of each other. Down south. Yeah, I guess it's yeah. down south. is a little bit different. They just, you know. Damn I mean? it. If there's room in a barn, they open a. All a I daycare. saw was the pictures. And I was like, oh, oh no. Any reasonable human would see this person <laughs> and be like, yeah, yeah, no, no, not for my kid. I'm sorry. I usually try not to like judge on appearances and stuff. But like, yeah, I'm the judging lady on the right. The lady I'm on judging the right her. Is so rough, dude. She's, yeah. she is, she's, she's pretty mean looking, man. Dude. Yeah. Brutal. I mean, uh, I don't know, dude. I'll tell you, like, it depends where you're at. Like, where, you know, like I've said before on the show, I live in Montgomeryville. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's small uh, flex. The daycares yeah, out here, the daycares out here are pretty nice. We'll just say good daycares in Montgomeryville. But when we were living in the Northeast, bro, my daughter was, it, this is her third daycare. First in daycare, an all Russian school. Well, the first daycare, <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you this. The first, the first daycare we went to was an Albanian speaking. Yeah, day. nobody, nobody spoke English. Right, it was great because well, my daughter's already bilingual, so it was right, pretty, pretty good. Right, and Helps it was a good, her. it was a good daycare. You right? have zero idea what's going on. You're like, what's going on, hon? Not a chance. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but like, yeah, right. but like you know, it was clean and the people were right. nice and like that They're was good fine. people, right? For sure. But like, dude, like we like I didn't start like, you know, I didn't even like look at daycares before. But like right. when you would drive around and you see the differences in some daycares, like yes. the state, like the state run daycares, bro, yeah, yeah, yeah. like the state yeah, yeah, or the yeah. state sponsored daycares or whatever, dude, they are rough. Like I would walk by and it's one like 350 pound lady just sitting, just burning heaters. And these kids are just running around and like there's a fence and it's like, all right, they're kind of in like a kennel for the day. You know, basically, and they're not fed. And then the second daycare my daughter went to 
was a Russian owned daycare that was cash only. Cash only daycare. You don't you don't say. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'll tell you, say. tell you this: security was not an issue at the cat. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. That was a your daughter's place. safe there. Ain't no yeah. nothing going down. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It was an <laughs> it was an old movie theater in the Northeast as it converted. Dude, to do any it's... Russians have bank accounts, dude? No, <laughs> like they always. It's oh, always excuse cash, me, dude. Yeah, it's always they all have cash. guns. I'll tell you that. Yeah, you're like, they hey, all got guns. Hey, 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 Boris, is my uh, daughter okay back there playing with the extension cord? She is fine, Matu. You'll stay. You're like, all right, all right. No problem, yeah, Boris. Dude, you I, ain't I kidding. You. They're definitely safe. You ain't kidding. Hell yeah. Yeah. Russians nice. do not play. No. Yeah. God, no. Love it, though. All right, good stuff. Let's keep it moving. Uh, Steve, what do you got for Incredibly Incredible? Now going from funny, he gets to a little sad. This one emotionally hits me. I lost a dog this year. You know, oh, I had no. a Rottweiler for 10 years. He oh, passed yeah, yeah, away. Yeah. I had to put him down this year. You know, shout out, Bruno. Right, I love Pete. you. One love. A Colorado hiker who's been missing since August near the Blackhead P- section of the Rockies, mm-hmm. which is like 12,500 foot peak, right? The yeah. 71-year-old man, don't go hiking when you're 71, decided he wanted to summon it with his dog, Finley, who is a 12-pound uh, Jack Russell Terrier. So they get lost. Uh, no one knows where they're at. This is in August. They find him on my birthday. This is why I brought the story up. August 30th. They find him. Or, oh, August 30th. October 30th. They find him. Uh, get over 2,000 hours of canine and groundwork to try to find this guy. Aerial camera, everything. Try, can't find him. Of course, hunters find him. That's what always happens, right? So some hunters in the backwoods find his decomposing body. And what do they find? Not only his decomposing body, but young Finley. At six pounds, who lost 50% of his body weight, still standing tough next to his owner, like man's best friend. This little Jack wow. Russell Terrier would not leave this man's side for 10 weeks in incredibly low temperatures, right? You're in the Rockies, you're way up. So they said that the owner, when they did the autopsy, he died of uh, hypothermia. And when you start to get hypothermia, especially when you're 71, don't hike when you're 71 in a mountains in Colorado Rockies. Whatever right. he uh when you get hypothermia and it starts coming in, you get uh you start getting delusional, you start getting like discombobulated, you don't know where it's going, and then it all kicks in, right? So this guy got confused, blah blah blah. This is what happened, he eventually went down, right? They bring the dog back, the dog's at six pounds. They think that it scurried around and maybe ate some mice. Also, at a 12 pound at the 12 pound Jack Russell Terrier, had to avoid things like mountain lions, coyotes, wolves. You're in the Colorado Rockies. Oh, There's some real oh predators. God. This dog, female too, little bitch is gangster. Shout out this bitch. And I'm not being mean. That's what they call them. Right. This bitch is a real gangster to not only stick by her master's side, man's best friend, ride or die no matter what. This thing survived all those predators. So shout out Finley, shout out man's best friend, and shout out dogs. For any person, I still say this to this day, any person who doesn't with dogs, I don't with you because I can't trust you. That's man's best friend nothing will ride as hard as a dog for you shout out finley yeah incredible yeah dude that's awesome wow i'm i mean like 10 I'm like, weeks in the yeah. rockies it stayed by his side dude i'm like blown away that's incredible <laughs> when the hunters found it was literally minutes. <laughs> no cats eating you five minutes into it. i was just yeah. gonna say and the dog didn't eat the nope. this okay all nope. right was again you're in like a will uh, now in a, in a real bad situation it probably would but in yeah. where he was at, there's, you know, it's like a very, very wilderness thing. And it's not nothing's as aggressive as a terrier. They were let, literally bred to hunt small vermin. So like oh. that's in its genetics. That's what it's meant to do. The small terriers, not the bigger ones. So like this thing is like this is what it's genetically meant to do. Chase and kill some rat or a bunny or you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Damn. Dude, that's, I and mean, that, I don't know. It's cool Go for ahead. the family, too. It's cool for the family, too. Like, I know they lost their, de- like, a grandfather or whatever it was, but to have the family dog come back, and then people, they did say this, they were like, only if that dog could talk to tell you what, what, what it went through in 10 weeks of sticking by that man's side, what it endured, what it saw. Because, again, at that size, Dude. oh, I'm sorry, sir. Everything in the sky is also death. A yeah. hawk, an eagle, wow. a raptor, a hawk, Dude, a snake, like anything. Everything. Yeah. Everything's death when you're that small. This isn't a Doberman next to him. It's a damn 12 pound Jack Russell Terrier. And Yo. a real close friend of mine, the Romeos had Terriers. They are gangster, gangster. Dude, I'll tell you too, like this is a. Uh... Like basically a housebroken dog, like you know what mm-hmm. I mean, like that goes from living in a house with an owner that takes care of it to fighting for its life every yep. day. Like the yep. dog, the transition of this dog is like it's wild, you know. Like I know, I dude, I agree that honestly, 
this would be a great movie. You know what I mean? Incredible. Like, like if they did, you know, maybe not a Homeward Bound style, but if they did, yeah. you know, I don't know, even if you made like a cartoon kind of thing out of it, but made it like ultra real of like, dude, this thing's fighting off fucking coyotes and all that shit. Woo. It reminds me of the meme. You ever see the one after like thank or after um uh Fourth of July that they always send out and it's like a dog and it's in like a military outfit and has a cigarette and it's like oh, yeah. the loud yeah. bangs, man. I'm different now. Like like he's been to war, it changes yeah. you. And he's like smoking yeah. a cigarette. That's how this dog came out of there. It went in there, and there's another meme too where it says like it shows wolves 500 years ago, and he's like, I ate every predator and anything around me that tried to mess with my tribe. And then it shows a domesticated dog 200 or 2,000 years later, and it says, I ate the wrong dog food, and now I have diarrhea. <laughs> like the difference between the two. Like, come on, man. Yeah. Nah. Love it, dude. Real good. Awesome stuff. So, okay, let's keep going. Shout out that terrier. Uh, and Finley. Steve, Finley. Shout out Finley. Steve, I'm going to go back to you, though. We're going on the sports and speds. What do you have for sports and speds? For the first time in 25 years, a NBA basketball game had multiple players ejected before either team scored. Mm-hmm. Makes me like basketball because basketball is the softest thing on the planet. Anyway, uh, best athletes, softest people. Um, Jaden McDaniels from the Timberwolves went to get a rebound. Clay Thompson, they were already chirping for the game. Everybody knows Clay Thompson. He's part of Splash Brothers, him and Steph Curry, blah, 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 Golden State Warriors. They get into a little tussle, start pulling each other, ripping jerseys. Immediately, everybody knows the only guy that he's still soft, but I guess he's tough in basketball. Draymond Green runs up mm-hmm. and decides he's going to grab seven foot French pussy, um, Rudy Gobert by his neck as he's trying to break the fight up and throw him in. Eh, I guess I would call it a rear naked choke. It's like a hybrid head. He has no idea what he's doing. Hybrid headlock, hybrid rear naked, and tries to drag him back. Rudy immediately, because he's he's French and, and pussy, puts his hands up to show, I'm not fighting back. You're seven foot two, fight back. Instead, yeah, he holds bro. his hands up. The other dude, he's not letting go, dragging him down. They have to fight Draymond to get him off. And uh, the best was, shout out Pat Beverly, who's now my new favorite sixer. Uh, Pat Beverly has a podcast with yeah, Barstool. And he, yeah, and yeah. And yeah, and he talks he talks to realists, right? And he saw that, and he's played with um, uh, Cat, which is uh, Carl Anthony Thompson, right? Cat's mm. Car- a, a superstar in the NBA. He said, he's bogus, and he's soft. For him to not defend his boy while Draymond was yoking him out, he goes, none of those guys came to his aid and tried to rip Draymond off him. They just all, like, stood there as Draymond choked him. He goes, if I ever played them guys in the in – the, in the, they're going to play each other in, like, the playoffs, I'd look over mm-hmm. and be like, oh, well, he's soft. There's no coming back from that. And then Rome asked him, he's like, yeah, what does he do to, like, rectify that? He's like, nothing. It's over. Everyone knows you're soft. Everyone knows you ain't going to do shit. Everyone knows <laughs> you're a uh, sissy. So shout out uh, shout out, uh, Pat wait, Bev for dude, lighting them dude, all up. Did did Draymond jump him from behind with the choke? Yes, but Draymond is six foot seven, decent build. Rudy Gobert is like seven foot two. Yeah. He's so gigantic. And instead so, of trying to grab the arm and Draymond like, ain't off, no fucking hero either, though. Like agreed, agreed. But that's for a, a bitch foot, move too. I mean, I guess, but for this is even softer for me. Him to not fight back and just hold I'm, his hands agreed, up like a weirdo. Agreed, you, agreed. This is why we we start. I started this, Matt. Me and you both agree. This is why basketball is the softest sport ever. But yeah, 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 yeah. Like yeah, Carl I, Anthony Towns, and you're a you're a hoe too. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, I don't know. I just, uh, like, I feel like, I mean, yeah, Rudy Gobert is a bit, you know, he's a bitch for not fighting back, for sure. But yeah. it's, Draymond's also a bitch for, like, like not stop, like, you know, jumping on the guy from behind and then, you know, thinking, like, oh, I'm going to fucking be the hero and take this guy down, where he jumps the guy from behind and then the guy's not fighting back and you don't stop. Like, if you really wanted to de-escalate the situation, that's fine. But he wanted to make it a thing like, I'm going to take this motherfucker down who ain't fighting back. Like, he's still a bitch, too. But here's my thing. They're both not, bitches. Not, not, not if he's my teammate, because he ran into pull. Rudy tried to pull them apart. And when he saw Gobert try to grab his teammate, that's when he yoked them. So if if, if that happens to Embiid and someone he runs up and he grabs Embiid, oh, uh, you're damn right, uh, B-ball Paul Reed better knock him the F out. Like, I need one of my teammates to grip him up. Everyone can't stand around and watch him grab our center, the right. biggest guy on the team, 
and just right. hoe him like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, the other guys, what is it, the Timberwolves? Yeah, or whatever. Timberwolves. Yeah, yeah, they're fucking fishes. They're all Soft. fishes. Yeah, agreed. But I mean, that also, you know, I, I, it says a lot about the other guys on the team, but it says a lot 100%. Too about, like, they, you know, I mean, he is French, so fuck him. He's so gay. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. shout out yeah. Pat Bev for being the man and calling. But I've it never out. been a big. I've never been a big fan of Draymond either. Just at like, all, at all. I like. I hate the way he talks. Yeah, he's too. goofy, man. Oh, he's yeah. fucking. He's the worst. Yeah, he's he's the toughest guy in the softest sport. So calm down, all right. Is, like, he, he, is he really? I mean, he just gets down. He will like try to fight you, but like, I mean, and nowadays, if he was in the eighties and he tried that shit with Chuck Barkley. No, Good no. luck, cuz you want to try that with like Larry yeah. Bird? You think Malone's taking any mouth? of his shit? No, 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 yeah. no, 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 not no, a no, chance, no, no. dude. No, 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 no. Yeah, do you think Bill Lambeer ain't gonna put him in the third row? Like, dog, they would have picked him up and body slammed him. Yeah, his ass. Yeah, semi pro is the best. How they always like, all fought that movie. Yeah, yeah. You know? Such a great movie. Yeah. Nice. All right. Good stuff, Steve. Let's keep it moving. Uh, Lishmushma, what do you got for sports and spets? Uh, did you guys see this? Uh, the act like the lawsuit between the ufc fighters and uh dana white sure. and then well and the ufc not in dana white and it's like his llc so mm-hmm. ufc lost the bid to revoke the class action status from like hundreds of the mma fighters and everything so there's like a billion dollar lawsuit out there right now because they're being underpaid you know like mm-hmm. we we're just talking about basketball basketball and all the other sports they probably you know they get like between 47 and 50 percent of revenue for like the sport dude these fighters in the ufc get between 16 and 19 percent of the revenues like no matter Uh no matter how much he makes on these pay-per-views dude you know like it's just like a i don't know so they're so they're going they're coming at him for you know like lost wages and stuff and they're they're saying he's pretty much created like a monopoly because what the closest thing was was what pride and 2006 nothing else has been around since then so they basically have like no leverage to say like hey man you got to pay us more because what are they going to do they can't Mm -hmm. go to another place to like you know i mean get paid more or anything to be honest the really the only leverage they have now and it's not even really leverage is fighting one of the paul brothers jake paul probably right like right that's but it's crazy to think like nate diaz anderson silva and uh woodley like their biggest paydays came against their biggest paydays in their career came against Jake Paul. Like how wild is that? Yeah. But what and does that are, say? Exactly. What's it say about UFC greed? Yeah. So these guys are the best, like best. in the best shape, toughest guys like on the planet. Biggest and stars. They have to go like swallow their pride and go box somebody that they know they can beat up in real life. And then, right. you know, lose in front of everybody just so they get it's, it's like messed up. You know what I mean? Now, so, now, this lawsuit's been around. I'm not sure if you saw this, Liam. I was talking. It's been around almost eight years now, right? The, and uh-huh. of course, of course, Dana White, being the media star he is, remember he smacked his fucking wife in public, and that just yeah. got brushed under the rug because he knows all. It's Dana White, right? Uh-huh. So Dana White, yeah, Dana White. Uh, this has been very, very pushed under the rug. He's been trying to hide this for a while because it's a billion dollars. I don't give a crap what company you are when you get hit with a billion dollars and you have to pay it out. Yeah, it'll it'll crumple your your company, right? Yeah. So uh, his big thing was uh, when you say that 16 to 19 percent revenue, that's for the top dogs. That's for the guys. If you're a title fighter, yeah. you get a piece of the uh, pay-per-view. If you don't hold a belt, he literally dictates whatever he wants, how much yeah. you get paid. There's literally guys on the biggest the one that just happened in Madison Square Garden, 295. The first couple guys are literally making like 50 grand. And when you remember about this, this is where people are like, oh, what's 50? here's the thing. Not only is it only 50 grand and you're taking taxes, right? Then I got to pay my trainer. I got to pay the guys that help with my nutritionist. I got to pay the camp guys. By the time they walk away, these guys are literally after three, four months making, you know, 10, 20 grand on a, and they're on a pay-per-view and there was five fights that generated $500 million and they gave them 20 grand. Get out of my face. And that's the main card guys too. Yes. That's the main main card. card. Yeah. They all talk about it. If you lose, the biggest thing, the saddest thing guys get upset about when they lose a title fight is if I don't have the belt, I don't get a piece of the pay-per-view. That's the yeah. biggest thing. So like when you get the belt, uh-huh. it's it's you get a you're only if you're a champion or a title, even if you're not a champion. So the guys who fight the champions don't get a piece of the pay-per-view. 
You right. have to have the belt to get a piece he, of a pay-per-view. You know, and the thing is, I understand where he's coming from. Like, because if you look at boxing, like the belts are meaningless. So corrupt. Correct. And it's corrupt. But like the belts are meaningless as well. Where it's very like, true. The belts, in U- the belts in the UFC mean something. Undisputed. Right? You're undisputed. They, they, they very much mean something. And this is a reason for it. But it doesn't mean you can't raise the percentage of the guys that, you know, even, like you can't raise the, the base salary of a guy. If you're fighting on the main card, bro, you deserve to get paid. You know what I mean? Like, that's what they're coming for, you know? And maybe, like, the first fight on the main card, maybe, you know, maybe you're getting 15% of the crowd, but still, 15% of the crowd is a couple, like, you know, maybe $60 million worth of revenue. Agreed. You know, like, come the fuck on now, you know? And And then the two hard things. The two hard things. Remember, they don't have a union. They're not unionized. Mm -hmm. And Dana is the promoter. He's the matchmaker. He's the the lord and state. He does whatever he wants. Yeah. yeah, and so if he's you taking do, all of that. And sure if is. you do, and if you do bitch about it, he will fucking put you on the. He'll put. He'll shadow ban your ass. You see what he's done to people. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's gonna give you. And if, God forbid, like they did this to like Tyron. You just said Woodley. He was one of them who was outspoken about it. The second Woodley lost his title. Oh, yeah. Dana made sure he did nothing but fight the hardest, craziest fight. That he will never get back to the title fight because he's like, oh, you remember how you were talking about like the when you were on top and I couldn't knock you off because you're the champion and you're talking all this fighter pay equal. Well, now that you lost, I'm going to make sure that I throw every Russian savage from Dagestan at you until. Yeah. Good luck with that. Good luck with that. Yep. So did you see there's so just like uh, like, you know, these rich Saudi Arabian dudes did with golf. There's going to be like a. They're, they want no, no, no. They want to make their own. It's going to be called the Professional Fighters League. They're going to start yeah. another one. Yeah, no one's going to go there. But here's the thing: if if this lawsuit goes through, Liam, this is the big thing. They were talking about uh-huh. this on Rogan. If it goes through and they do lose, they get sued for two billion dollars and they pay out three hundred ex fighters, a big a big chunk. They're they're going to be so low that Dana's going to have to sell, and the Saudi Arabians are foaming at the mouth. Oh, because so they want to then they want to take it they're over. Just putting this, you think they're just putting this PFL there to like dangle the carrot in front of fighters and say, hey, we'll pay you just to kind of like weaken the UFC. And then once he kind of goes under, then because remember, then take there are it. other places. They got Bellator, they got there's a, one FC over in uh, the Philippines is worldwide bigger than the UFC. UFC is the biggest in America. Worldwide, uh, one FC has way more uh, uh, spectators than they do. Does it pay but, better? Yeah. Oh, if, okay. if you're, if, if it pays better on average, not the champions. But I don't care if you're the one champion, you ain't the UFC champion. The UFC yeah. is the yeah. NFL. It is what it is. And you can't, like, I don't, you could be the Bellator champ. You could be the uh, PFL champ. You could be whatever champ. You ain't the UFC champ. That's the belt. You know what do I mean? They, do they get paid if they're on the Ultimate Fighter? No, and those yeah, fights aren't they're... those fights aren't considered on your record either. Shaw yeah. talks about this all the time because he was in the uh, Tough House. Yeah, yeah, he was. He fought Nelson in the finals, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, he was on the yeah. he was on, he was on the highest rated one ever with uh, Kimbo Slice. Yes, yeah, Kimbo was in that. Yeah, Dude, yeah, it guys, was. And... Uh, what's his face? Uh, Rampage was there, right? And Forrest yeah, Griffin. Yeah, was that that's what he beat okay. the door down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Got Liam, I interrupted you. I'm sorry. Nah, you just say? you know, just meet him in the middle. I mean, uh, of right. all athletes, 100%. these guys are like trading their bodies like the most. You know what I mean? Agreed. Like, the Agreed. damage that's going to be done to some of these guys, like brains and that, dude. 100%. Yeah, yeah. you, you got to pay them more, man. No one puts their life and, and health on the line worse than a UFC fighter. You're out of your mind or you're just not a smart person. If you think that the out, like worst case scenario on a football field, you know, you get hit really hard. There could be like a paralysis for a little bit it's so far and in between. And like a football is like, you know, close to in fighting, mm-hmm. you might never go home. Like in boxing, yeah. how many people a year die in boxing? That, a plenty. I know yeah. it hasn't happened in the UFC yet. But, like, you saw what happened to Cyborg when he got kneed by MVP and it crushed his cranium yeah, into yeah. his goddamn so brain. Yeah. Like, like it, you'll never be the same. Yeah, There's, what do you think that yeah. does to your brain when you're Ugh. fucking... Turns it into crack soup. your walnut like that, dude. Yeah, bro. Jesus Christ. It's awful. So, all right. Good stuff, guys. We are coming towards the top of time, though. Uh, Steve, what do you got before we get out of here? If you've never had the love and companionship of a dog, shout out, Bruno. I love you. If you've never had the companionship of a real dog, go get yourself a dog and you will have a ride or die for the rest of your life. And if you don't like dogs, suck my dick. 
I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah, very much so. Uh, Liam, what do you got before we get out of here? Dude, people, stop leaving your kids in the car and, like, going into the store to, like, you know, to, like, you know, casually shop up and down the aisles and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Freaking guy. And if you do, go to a Gucci store, not the Penny Chop or whatever the fuck that was. <laughs> uh, yeah, nice. somewhere where they'll maybe be more safe in the parking lot. <laughs> So, nice. Well, speaking of the Penny Chopper, this has been another episode of the Working Perspectives Podcast. I'm Matt Lavelle, become today by the one and only Lashmiz A. Liam Reese and Strong Stem Steve Cabot. In case you're wondering, you can find all our stuff and all our content on all podcast platforms and YouTube at Working Perspectives Podcast. You can us on Instagram at Working Perspectives Podcast. You can join us on Twitter and TikTok at Working P Pod. And if you'd like to be a guest on the show, please email us at workperspectives at gmail.com. And please like, subscribe, so we keep bringing you this sweet, sweet content. Thanks for listening, and have a great weekend. Thanks. See you.